Hey guys, how's it going? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs and I have another action figure review for you today. This is the Play Arts Kai Devil May Cry 4 Nero figure. This is the second figure in the series of two figures. You get Dante and Nero. I'll be doing Dante in a separate review. But I wanted to start off with Nero. So here he is. He stands just shy, maybe an eighth of an inch shy of 10 inches. So definitely a good size figure. As usual with the Play Arts figures, absolutely great detailing. I'll just give you a quick up and down shot of him if I don't knock him over. Tons and tons of detail throughout the entire figure. Not a whole lot to see on the back, but we'll get to that in a minute. As far as accessories go, he comes with two interchangeable hands. This one stays on always, so it's not like Dante where he's got an extra one there. He just has the two here, the pistol slash sword hand and a fist. Personally, I wish that they gave him another hand to hold the sword, just because the uh, trigger finger hand, and this is the same thing for Dante, aren't perfect for the sword. It could have been a little bit better. But regardless, they have nice details on them. The molded rings that are painted nicely. And they have decent peg work, so it's not really too much to complain about. He also comes with his revolver, which is nicely made for sure. Really can't complain. Tons of great paint work on there. Does have a peg hole for the hand. A little bit more paint work on this side. Really great detail. And the cylinder actually spins in the revolver. It's a little tight, but... And it's useless, it's not needed at all, but it's a nice little touch, so that's cool. He comes with this, which isn't really an accessory. Can we focus? What you use this for is you pull out the one that's on his back, that's already in there. And you put this in, and now you have a peg for his sword, so you can keep his sword on his back, which has a peg hole, obviously. It would go that way, and that's kind of cool. Which brings me to the sword, which is very nicely done. Huge amount of detail throughout the entire piece, and it's humongous. It's really, really big. It's nice and solid, too. It doesn't feel like it's going to break, even the uh, little trigger thing there. Great detail throughout sculpt and paint work, and just to compare it to the figure, it stands up to his chest or his armpit. It is about eight and a half inches long, so really good size. Let's put the gun in there so you can see how that looks. He holds it no problem, obviously, due to the peg. Finger doesn't really go on the trigger, which could be better, but it's okay. As long as he holds it, I'm fine with it. The sword, on the other hand, not quite as nifty, even with the peg. It tends to fall out of his hand every once in a while because there's no help with the hand at all. It's really just the peg holding it in place. The fingers aren't sculpted tight enough. And that's why I would like to see an other, another hand for him to hold the sword. You can rotate it in the hand a little bit to seat it in his thumb, but it doesn't help that much. Either way, he still holds it and you can get some really good poses out of him. Let's get that stuff out of the way and talk about paint and articulation. Let's start with the head. The head on this guy is sculpted really well. It looks just like it did in the game. The hair and everything, really fantastic. It is two pieces for the hair, so you can see a little bit of a seam across the top, but that's okay by me. It's not not too noticeable, especially from the front. You can't really tell at all. And then the face, like I said, it looks just like the in-game character. The paintwork is top-notch. He's got the dark circles around his eyes. Like five different shades in his eyes, the eyebrows, the lips are painted, everything. It looks pretty much like a real person. So really no complaints at all from that. Articulation wise, it's a double ball peg. So plenty of range of motion. Let me zoom out a little bit. Plenty of range of motion, whichever way you want. You can get some really natural looking poses out of him. And it works really well. And he doesn't have any of the neck articulation that some of the newer figures have. Which I personally am a fan of because you can't really spin it half the time anyway. The hood here is a separate piece from the rest of the outfit. It's glued on in the front, but it doesn't get in the way of the articulation because it's a really soft piece of plastic. It's glued on right there by the zipper. 
So it looks really nice and it's nicely executed, I think. Tons of great paintwork and shading as usual. Same thing for the rest of the outfit. All of the jacket parts are soft vinyl. This part is a separate piece altogether, the lower half, so you can make it like that if you have him doing a dash or something like that, if you pose him that way. It's got a hinge in there and that also spins. It's really kind of tricky to do that because you end up spinning other joints. But if you hold everything in place and try to move that, so for example if you spin his torso, you can also spin that jacket part to get it to line up again. So that's a real nice touch. His inner jacket or his hoodie is detailed wonderfully. Tons of sculpt work and detail in there. It's also soft. The way it's made, it kind of bellows out at the stomach so it looks like he's pregnant. But it's not super noticeable as long as you have imposed other than standing straight up. So I'm okay with it. And it doesn't impede any articulation. If you look, he's got a uh, ball joint torso. So it gives him a good range of motion. Forward, backward, side to side. Really no complaints there. You can, of course, line up the jacket again. So everything looks good. Underneath that, you can see his belt buckle, which is made nicely. And he does have a waist twist in there. No hinge in that though, just a standard twist for that part. He's got the floating hips that are standard on uh, Play Arts figures. So you can move the legs independently and it's a soft material so it doesn't get in the way of any posing. It's a ball joint for each leg and then the leg spins around on that obviously. Plenty of range of motion there. Then there's a cut joint in the thigh here to give him even more motion. Again, more detailing, looks great. The knees. Still kind of ugly. Play Arts is, these are some of the more decent ones. Some of the knees are really bad from Play Arts, so these are alright in my opinion. But it's double hinge right there for the knee. And the boot swivels at the top. Again, more great detailing. A standard ankle hinge in there. And then he's got the ankle rocker where the foot actually swings around. It's not the best looking because it's not, it's not lined up quite perfectly. So it looks a little weird sometimes, but it's more than effective, so I'm fine with that. And again, the detailing is still phenomenal. In the arms, we have the uh, standard type of ball disc shoulders. Nothing too fancy going on. He doesn't have that extra hinge in the shoulder to bring it forward. Just a standard ball disc. He's got a swivel in the bicep and a single jointed elbow, which actually gives him a really good range of motion. But... You can see his skin, which the only thing I could have done is make the elbow itself a little bit bigger because you need the skin to show on the top so it looks normal. And then when you bend it, they put maybe another piece of plastic in there to kind of hide that. If you go too far, you just see it. So not the best, but it's still okay. And the hinge is effective, so I'm okay with it. At the wrist, we have the little leather strap, which is a separate piece. If you'll look, let me pop it off and you can actually see it. <clears throat> this is a good way to show you the hand articulation also. Oh, okay, it's not coming off, but either way, the leather strap is a separate piece, and then you get you have a hinge in the wrist. So you have a hinge there, and then it's a ball joint kind of, so you can move the hand on that. You get plenty of range of motion. Both hands pop on relatively easily. There's, the pegs are still somewhat fragile. Okay, that's not, I'm going to do it. Not on camera, because I can't see what I'm doing on camera. There we go. Okay. So the leather strap hides the wrist articulation pretty well, but you still get a good range of motion, so that's pretty nice. This arm, elbow joint's the same, except since it's the um, demon arm, it actually doesn't have any of the paint issues that the other one has. Same articulation, though. And um, the hand technically has the same articulation. It's got the hinge in there, but it's a little bit more limited due to the sculpt. But the sculpt is really nice. And it's a really nice uh, little addition for the display piece, just because it makes him stand out a little bit from other figures. So really nothing to complain about here. I'm getting out of breath talking about this guy because I'm trying to talk so fast. But it's a really great figure. It's not perfect, but most figures aren't perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and say, I'm going to give this guy a 9 out of 10. There's really not too much to complain about. It's an absolutely great figure. And he comes with a good amount of accessories and detail and articulation. Everything's just pretty much on point. 
like I said, there's not a whole lot to complain about. Put the sword in there, and even in a vanilla pose like this, it's just an amazing looking figure. So there it is, guys. That's the Play Arts Kai Nero from Devil May Cry 4. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the review for Dante and some other videos. And in the meantime, keep collecting.